This satsang is being offered to the reunion summit, which is a wonderful gathering that's happening globally. And I want to thank Josh for organizing this great event and to thank you for the honor of participating. And I want to thank all of those who are involved in making it happen and those who are participating on this love stream wherever you may happen to be in local space. And thank everyone here in this local space of the Sat Yoga Ashram from which we are transmitting on the misty mountains of Costa Rica. And I thank all of the retreatants, the volunteers, the permanent residents who are all working together to make this happen and to create this uh, very extraordinary self-sustaining community that is working diligently to be a role model for the divine renaissance that the world is now giving birth to, thanks to this planetary awakening that is taking place. And it is a great joy and a great honor to be part of this movement into higher consciousness and planetary unity at this most auspicious historic moment of transition from one age to another, from one cycle of time to another. And I know that everyone who is drawn to an event like this must be a very old soul and Many have gone through other Kali Yugas and participated in other transitions from one cycle of time to another. And so deep in our souls, we know what this is about. And we understand the perfection of all that is happening and are able to approach this world transformation without fear, but with the gladness that comes with the realization that the capacity to rise in consciousness now together as a single wholehearted planetary noosphere is going to enable miraculous events to occur as this period of time unfolds to its climax. And so for those of you who are not familiar with the concept of a satsang, it's a gathering that is held in order to express and resonate at the highest level of consciousness, which in Sanskrit, the ancient yogis referred to as sat. Sat is our supreme beingness. And by resonating together at that vibrational frequency of sat chit ananda, which is the word for that ultimate consciousness, in all of its aspects of not only beingness, but intelligence, the infinite intelligence of the source of the entire cosmos and more. That ultimate intelligence that has designed and is choreographing this unfoldment to its most benevolent conclusion and to a new beginning at the highest level of consciousness is also in a state of bliss, 
of ecstasy, of unlimited joy. And so the more we resonate in that union with God consciousness, with our ultimate self, our ultimate beingness, the more that joy will overcome any of the karmic baggage or weight or negativity or resistance that might still remain within the ego complex until it has been completely dissolved in that infinite field of shining luminous awareness. I got a report of the earlier talks today and they were wonderful and they covered a great deal of what is going on at the phenomenal plane and what must be done at that level, which leaves me free to focus on the big picture, which I would like to explore with everyone. And then from there, we can understand the implications at each subset of that largest paradigm and context of reality until we understand how to act accurately in alignment with the Tao at the individual level, at the level of biological family, at the level of tribe, at the level of community, and at the global level. All of these levels are interweaving because the universe is operating on a fractal level of self-similarity at every different level of reality, from the most macrocosmic to the most microcosmic. And the human consciousness acts like the hinge between all of those and combines and integrates the understanding when our minds are clear of the maya, the illusion that comes from the ego complex. And so the entire challenge that we face as individuals and as a planetary species is to overcome the internal obstacles of incoherence, of fear, of desire, of identification with matter, with the physical body, so that our consciousness can be freed to again return to our real nature, which is in oneness with that infinite source of consciousness that is the creative power that underlies and pervades and determines the destiny of our universe and of each being within it. So if we start with that understanding of being and we recognize that the problems that we face come from our loss of contact with our real being. And this loss of contact began long before this uh, COVID pandemic uh, story uh, took place. This has been a long fall of human consciousness from a divine level to a let's say a heroic level and then to a metaphysical and religious level and then finally in the 20th century to a mostly atheistic, materialistic, consumeristic, uh, dumbed down uh, ego structure that has been uh, mandated, imposed, indoctrinated uh, upon most of us and uh, and, and has brought about a kind of cultural amnesia so that many of us don't understand the real history of our planet uh, or of our cultural roots or of our real nature because we have been trained to believe in Darwinism and in uh, randomness, meaninglessness, that all of this universe is a result of chance rather than designed by a super intelligence. And so we have cut off our access and our connection. The word yoga means reconnection. To it, the same as the word religion, re ligari, reunite 
with that source of our consciousness and be able to download the intelligence and the willpower and the clarity and coherence of that unitive field so that we can live together in unity rather than as separate and conflictive entities struggling against each other for some crumbs of the pie that is gradually being taken away entirely from everyone and now very rapidly. So everything that happens karmically in the external world is a reflection of what happens internally. When we regain our internal fullness and empowerment and our capacity to realize that we are dreamers of this dream, not victims of someone else's nightmare and agenda for us, when we take back our power spiritually and we create a morphogenetic field in which we are reconnected in what the ancient yogis call the net of Indra, a network of consciousnesses that are all unified and are all reflecting that same infinite luminosity and brilliance of the one self that each of us is a manifestation of. Each of us equally at our very core is a manifestation of the Supreme Self. And it is the act of going within deeper and deeper than the surface levels of the mind, of the ego, or even of the soul to the deepest level of the unborn, uncreated awareness that is the origin and real nature of our being. It is this that must again emerge through our own invocation, through our own meditation, through our own surrender to that deepest part of our being so that we can unite heart and mind in a state of divine love and wisdom that is able to bring unity and the full power of our creative intelligence acting together into effect, which will be able to overcome any darkness or any negativity that might now be standing in the way of peace and freedom and love and the unfoldment of our potential to recreate a world that is a kingdom of heaven in the true sense in which that term was originally delivered. So let us recognize that there is originally and ontologically prior to the manifestation of the universe, a field of luminous consciousness. Everything is consciousness. What we call matter, even quantum physics now recognizes is simply an agitation in the field. This ultimate field of, of consciousness, this oceanic infinite field of consciousness gives birth to a quantum unified field. And then that field gives birth to the cosmos as we know it. But from that place of the ultimate consciousness, there is no time. All time is present here and now, all of space. There is no separation, and this is why there are phenomena like quantum entanglement. This is why there is superposition. This is why that we are all able to resonate at that same vibrational frequency and feel the rising of consciousness beyond the bodily limits of the ego when we silence the mind and focus on those vibrations that are present within the field of our awareness at the most subtle level when we enter into the core of our being. It is that act of yogic attunement that is the act that will liberate us individually and as a planet from the oppressive 
conditions that are currently taking place that for some is appearing as a trauma, a, a vast traumatic loss of freedoms. But the other side of trauma is what the postmodern philosophers in the West, like Alain Badiou and Gilles Deleuze and others, have called the event. And an event is an opportunity for an awakening that can only come from a sudden shock to our going on being in normal ways, a, a stoppage of the symbolic order, a gaping hole in the real that can create terror for the ego, but creates the opportunity for liberation if we are willing to take a leap into the unknown and take advantage of what seem to be uh, situations that are uh, causing us to have to contract. But instead of that, they will enable us to expand. For example, if there is enforced solitude, that will enable you to go into deeper states of samadhi than you would have if you were allowed to be active, rajasic, as the yogis say, and discharge the energy in outer activity. We want now the inner action of non-action that enables the mind to become completely silent and to be able to be like the clearest mirror that receives the information directly and clearly from this, that supreme source of consciousness and be able to then translate that into action and into vibrational transmissions that bring about a unification of the collective consciousness. So all of the things that we are losing are bringing about a possibility of gains that we might not have chosen otherwise. And we always have to see what is the blessing hidden in the apparent dark cloud that seems to be covering the world. And when we are able to see that and make use of it, then the darkness itself turns to light. And it is this metamorphosis that human consciousness is designed to achieve. And this is the moment of that global awakening that could not have happened under other conditions that will now enable us to reach our true fulfillment. So once we understand that there is one self, one single whole consciousness that has given rise to the entire universe, then each of us is a node of that consciousness. And each of us has a little dream within the great dream. And once we can pierce through that little dream of the ego, we again become one with the great dream and with the dreamer of the dream. And it is this liberation from the small self with the small s to the great self that will be all that is necessary to free our planet from the current chains of oppression, external and internal. It is this that will end the karmic baggage that keeps people uh, in a state of, uh, let's say, spiritual immaturity and that can be overcome very easily when we are determined and we are clear and we seek the greatest truth and the purest love. And it is this purification of our motivation that is the key to our self-liberation. It is only when we have overcome ego consciousness and its paranoid mentality that we will be able to recreate community in the highest sense. And community is 
the important base for creating a network of global consciousness that transforms the entire noosphere. And so I hope that everyone who is listening will take heed and work together to create meditation circles and communities that are not just people getting together occasionally, but that you can, at least those of you who feel called to do so, create communities in which you're growing your own food and living at the periphery and off the grid or preparing for those times when the grid will no longer be available and be able to function and sustain through a time of tribulation that is ahead for most of the world's population. We should also keep in mind that because the entire universe is consciousness, that the earth herself, Gaia, is conscious. And Gaia is participating in a major way and she is becoming ever more active. And don't think that those earthquakes and volcanoes and tsunamis and all of the extreme weather is accidental. But we must not see that either as some a curse, but take advantage of that because it is also disrupting plans of those who would want to create a different kind of order that is not in alignment with God consciousness. And don't think that Surya is not involved, the sun god, as uh, he was named in ancient India. The sun and its solar uh, emissions is also part of the shift of climate and the shift of the electromagnetic field of the planet and of the subtle vibrational frequencies to which human life and all life is attuned. So everything that is happening is working together at a cosmic level and at a, a human level. And the more that each individual takes responsibility for anchoring and downloading that divine power and living in accord with that and not giving in to fear and not giving in to the, the obsolete petty narratives of the ego that would focus at too limited a horizon of trying to get some individual enjoyment, but to focus on the need to sacrifice the ego in order for the welfare of the whole to be able to be achieved. It is that capacity to sacrifice out of love that we are all called upon to activate at this time in which those forces of light and dark are colliding and can only be resolved in unity by our choosing the light and instantaneously the shining of light eliminates all darkness. The attainment of this realization of the self is something that everyone is yearning for at a deep level. But there is also fear of the unknown, of letting go, and of the inner silence in which we will no longer know who we think we are. We will no longer have the beliefs that even though they created all of our suffering, have also created a, a net of meaning that has held the consciousness in place. And we must allow those bonds to let go so that new meaning, new wisdom can come in and a cosmic consciousness can replace the individual ego complex and bring a new level of clarity, no longer based upon an individual sense of self, but on that universal selfhood that is perfection, and that is beauty, that is goodness, that is love. 
All of the spiritual traditions, East and West, have taught this same truth throughout our history. This is nothing new. We can find it in the Greek philosophers, we can find it in the Buddhist yogis, the Taoist yogis, the Vedic yogis, we can find it with the Sufis, we find it clearly in Christian mysticism, in Jewish Kabbalah, we find it in alchemy, we find it in all of the traditions that have been based upon the downloads of sages who have reached that ultimate state. Even though different terminology may be used, the ultimate, the ultimate realization is the same for all of those beings who have reached at the absolute. And it is that that we are now called upon to replicate in our own consciousness. And not to look outward, but to look inward to find the real. <laughs> <laughs>